In this video, we're going to have a look at a dynamic pricing table. So here you can see I have a single item and I'm going to add another one now. So I head over to my custom post type, which I call pricing tables, and I'm going to add a new item. So the new item here, we're going to call that uh, option two. And the subheading, uh, let's call it uh, two subheading. And then the price, the price that we're going to go with over here will be, um, let's make that uh, 129. And the features, um, let's just go feature one, feature two, and feature three. Uh, the price meta box, um, that will be that meta below the price, and that'll be per unit. And the ribbon text will be must have, and the button text will buy me now. We'll publish that. Then head over to the website and refresh. And you'll see now that we have a new price in our pricing table, but you'll notice here, for example, that we have the features next to each other. And here we have the features one below the other. So to change that, we just head over here and now in the visual editor, I'm just going to convert those to bullet points. And we'll update, head back, and now we have our second option. Right, now you'll also see here that this one has a ribbon must have and buy me, and uh, maybe you don't want that to be the case. So then, um, what we do is we go back to the item, and if I don't want the ribbon text, then I will simply remove and update and then refresh the page. And once that's saved, you'll see now that we don't have the ribbon text. So that's one way of then differentiating the items. The way that this works now is if we look at the structure, you'll see that in this particular section, which is the um, Let's call this the dynamic tabs, uh, dynamic um, pricing. You'll see that we just have uh, in our pricing table, we just have one table. So if I go to the content here, you'll see that we have the post title, and that is the name of our single item. So we have one item, and then what we do is above that, we have the container, and in this container, we have the query loop. And then to get the styling right, I had to introduce another container before the section. So basically what happens now is every time you add a new item in your, um, let's add the third item then, just to complete the series here of three particular pricing tables. So we'll call this one option three. Um, and you'll see I have some default um, uh, text in some of the fields. This one will go with uh, 119, and then the price table feature here, uh, let's go with, um, we'll just go one, two, three. And the price meta will go with um, just the default text, the ribbon text, no ribbon text, and the button, we'll just leave it by me. So we'll publish that. Head over to the website. Once that's published and refreshed, you'll now see that we have the three items. Now you'll also notice that the um, the sequence is, you know, maybe not the sequence I'd like. I'd like that one in the middle. And now when you want to move things around, it's not a case of just dragging and dropping the element. Um, now what we need to do is have a look at the way that our posts are set up. So. At the moment, if we go and have a look then at the loop for the container, and we look at the items there, you'll see that we can order by date, um, you know, any one of these items. And uh, there's also the menu order, uh, a meta value. Um, now, I haven't uh, included a, a count or anything, a meta value. So the best way to do this then perhaps would be to do it by date. So one way to do it then would be to say, okay, let's let's do it by date, but let's go order ascending instead of descending. 
and that would then flip it around and we would go option one, option two, option three. If I wanted to um, have the uh, featured option here in the middle now, so that means we've got to reverse things around. Well, the easiest way to do that would be just to change the date on that post. So I know that uh, if that was published at 138 and this one's at 122, then the PM here should be maybe at 139. So I'll just go into option one and change the date, uh, the time to 0139. And update that. Let's just see. Oh, it's updated. Let's update. And then go back to the website. And then the sequence would be changed. And now we have the option one in the middle. In terms of, of styling, everything happens in the same way that it happened before. So uh, if I go here into the um, bricks and I go to the pricing table, if I want to style the various items, it's exactly in the same way. So if you look here, we've styled the price, but let's say I want to change maybe the background for the features. So I'm going to scroll down to the um, features, um, which is here, and then I can change the background color to um, whatever I want. Now, there are a couple of things that you need to know when it comes to um, doing it this way. So the first thing that you need to know then is that in all these elements, you'll see that there is an option to select dynamic data. So what I've done now is gone in and selected the dynamic data for each of those posts. You'll see that in the post, we have the normal post title, and then I've added custom fields for the balance of the items. In this case, I used um, advanced custom fields, but you can also use Metabox. And I've named each of these then with the prefix of price table. So I can see that when I look through the um, selection here, you'll see ACF price table. Because it pulls through the name of the field and not the title as I've saved it here. So if you look here in the field group, it's price table price or price meta or ribbon text. But when it pulls through, it actually has the price table. So the name of the field. So prefixing the field is, is pretty important. And then what I've done is just gone and had a look to see where I could use dynamic text. And I've then replaced whatever was available here with that dynamic text. So to show you how this works, if I was looking for the button text, then I would simply go into the dynamic data. I'd scroll all the way down to just above the meta box fields. Or if you don't have meta box, this will be right at the bottom. And I look for the button text. So there I see the button text. Now you'll see here you see the title and when I select it there you see the actual database field so you can make sure that this is the correct field for that particular position and that's all that you do. If there's no data in a field nothing is rendered. So if um, I've set to show ribbon text however if the um, post doesn't have ribbon text then the, no, no ribbon text will be um, rendered as you can see here. And then what I've also done in some of the custom fields is I've entered some default text. So when it came, for example, to the price meta, we have this um, default meta default value. And if we go and have a look on the website, you'll see that we have the default meta, except where I've replaced that with per unit. And what that looks like in the actual post is you'll see here it says, for example, default meta. And I can say this is new meta and update and now you'll see that we actually have um, the new meta one more thing that i need to show you which is really um, cool is that you can actually add images to your layout so to do that very easy i'm going to head over to my post and what i'll do is i'll add a featured image so let's set a featured image here and let's do um, Okay, let's do the chair. Uh, we'll update. Then um, this was option one. So let me let me go back then to option two and add a featured image there. So featured image. Right, we'll set the featured image here. So we've done the chair. Let's do um, let's do that chair. 
and then let's go okay let's go to the last one so option one option two i think we're down to option three now and we'll add an image so um, there we can set the featured image and let's see what we'll put in that one and um also just trying to look for a kind of a squarish image so that it you know kind of fits in with the others um ah i'll just add a let's add a beanie okay so i'm not sure if all those images are properly sized but we'll have a look now then i'm going to head back to the bricks and what i'm going to do now is instead of having this subtitle i'm going to add the image in that space so scroll up to the top scroll down to where you see the subtitle so price prefix node would be above that um, pricing so title subtitle um, here we have the subtitle text and what i'm going to do is delete that and then go into the dynamic data and i'm going to select the featured image and then i'm going to save and already you can see what's going on there and now when we refresh you'll actually see that we have um, the image pulling through so if the image has a transparent background like this png that's great obviously then you can um, you know that just looks really cool when it comes to a pricing table so um, transparent pngs would probably be your best option if not and you do have images then they would come through something like that um, to style this further though what you'd have to do is just have a look at the styling that applies to this particular image um, and then do the styling accordingly so you'd have to look at the pricing table subtitle um, so if you wanted to add a border to that so you would do something like that and then space img and then maybe you'd go something like border radi radius uh, the ius and there you'd have the 10 pixels so that's the one um, another thing another way that we could look at that and give it a test so i'm going to refresh the page so we go back to the standard and then i'm going to go over to the um, subtitle here and see if there is an option um, to do anything in the background here so there's the post title there is the featured image then we have this padding background color border title subtitle so there's no um, border setting for the um, for the subtitle otherwise we could have tried that um, border radius but anyway you can now um, you know add that manually and so maybe that's what we'll do so that's just a case of selecting the subtitle class um, and adding img to the end and then it's just a case of border aid yes and 10 pixel and it already looks a lot better and then of course you can also add the margin top and do something like that so that's um very quickly then how we can do that and i'm just going to add it here in the customize section um so there's a little bit of um, css that you would need to do right so we can publish that and i think then that with the um rounded corners having that image on the dark background could work quite well so that's how you can then add images and dynamic content to the pricing table there's one more thing that i need to show you and that has to do with the styling to get the layout right so what i'm going to do um, is go back here and i'm going to add another section so we'll add a section now that we've added the section, I'm going to add a price table from scratch. Um, I think that's going to be the best way to demonstrate how to get the um, different um, elements right. And we'll do the same thing. We have the pricing table and now to make it dynamic, we go to the container before the pricing table and we activate the um, post loop. And here I'm going to go to my custom post called pricing tables and I'll limit the post per page to three. And that will then um, start to pull through the data. And the other thing that I need to do then uh, would be to update, you know, where the data gets pulled through to. 
so that it displays correctly. So if we refresh the page now, you'll see that we have those three elements. So um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just change the first item, which is the title to pull through dynamic data. So pricing table, and then uh, let's remove business. And I'm going to choose then the post title, and that will then pull through the different options, right? So we save that, head over to the website, and right, there we have option three, option one, option two. So that's pretty much what we have here. Option three, one, two. Okay, so we just um, have a difference in ascending or descending. But the point here now is to have a look at how we can align these items next to each other. So if we uh, understand the way that um, Bricks Builder works with loops, uh, what you're going to find is that this information is very tightly joined to this container. This is the loop, so it's not actually an element. This is now part of the container, if I can put it that way. Um, what I can do in the container, though, is give it some padding. Um, so if I gave that 10 and 10, that'll be the padding to the left and to the right of the element. You can see the padding there. So when they're next to each other, there'll, there'll be that little space between them. In order to now style the container, I could do it in the section, but I prefer to add another container and then put that just in between. So we have those elements. Now in this container that we've newly added, I'm going to go to the layout and we simply then put that into a horizontal row and the three items jump up next to each other. So now we have the, the row done. So let's save that and let's head over to the website and refresh. And you'll see now that I have the three elements next to each other. I'm just going to create a bit of space uh, be between the sections here. So I'll just quickly head over here and add some margin above and below the section that we're working in. And now you'll see we just have some space, right? So that's how we line them up next to each other. Let's just have a quick look at the um, styles associated with them. And I'll show you why now. So we're having a look here. And if we go to the, um, right, this is the pricing tables. And then we have the UL, then we have the, li and in the li we have the elements the ul then wraps each element um, each of the pricing tables and then here we have the main pricing tables wrap and then we have the uh, container which has the the loop and then this is the container that now um, includes all the elements so if i go into my pricing table for example here and I go to option three and I'm going to add another element and then I'm going to go over to the website and now what you'll notice uh, soon uh, okay we need to pull in that dynamic content so uh, let me quickly go over to the pricing table and the reason I'm doing this is to show you what happens when the height is different for each of the items so we head over to content we open up that pricing table scroll down here i'm going to remove those and i'm now going to add my custom field which is the um, features and there you see the features are being pulled through and i'm going to go back to the website right so you can see this um, element now is a little bit longer than the other so we want to get them all lined up to the same height what we have to do first then is head back into Bricks Builder and what we're going to do is select the container. So we select the container that contains the pricing tables and we set the direction of the flex to horizontal row and we stretch. All right, so we do that setting first. Then what I'm going to do is head over here into the website and you'll see we still don't have any changes taking effect. And the next thing um, that I did then was to head over to the um, the UL element. And then we apply a height of 100%. And now you see that the element stretches to the correct height. So that's the element that we need to update. 
Um, I'm just going to refresh that. Uh, one thing that I hadn't tried yet is if I go, and I'm not sure if this will work, if I go into style and I set the height here, um, I'm not sure if that would have a similar effect to doing it um, manually. So no, that didn't have a similar effect. So then I'll just head over to customize quickly. And I'm going to paste in that 100%. So right, so we've set the pricing table URL height to 100%. Um, and I'm going to close that. So then um, we now have the art. Well, technically speaking, now those items should all be at 100%. So let me. Um, yeah, we've set that. And let me go just back here and remove this 100% that I added. And now you'll see that the element is lined up to 100%. So actually, adding that 100% in here, um, when we have the container selected, um, disables the 100% when we add it to the uh, UL element. So now we have the elements 100%. Um, yeah, uh, alternatively, you might want to if you have an item that has an extra characteristic or feature, there's nothing wrong with actually letting the one item be slightly taller than the other. Okay, so with that done, maybe what we need to do now is just have a look and see how that might affect the mobile view. So the original pricing tables uh, that we created seem to be fine. And then here we have these three bunched up and I saw right at the top the initial um, tables that we did are also all um, bunched up so what I'll do is just it's just it looks like uh, somehow the styling between the one and the other have overlapped somehow um, the one that we created now is fine okay so then the one that we created now with the defaults turned out fine and it looks like something else would have affected these and I know what that is and it's um, I changed the styling on these, the widths. Um, so if you look over here, what I did there on that one, um, when I was just having a look to see how to get everything to fit, I set the width of the table here to 30%. And that's not required. So now when I refresh, you'll see that this one will now, right, that one will now fit across. So. Yeah, um, not a lot of styling to do to get it to fit. And yes, you can add the images. So that you can do now via um, custom content. So suddenly the pricing table becomes a very nice dynamic kind of element that you can use on the website. The last bit of styling that I'd like to just point out is yeah, we have the dynamic content and you'll see that the uh, two elements are shorter than the other one. And let's say that option one is our main feature. So what I'm going to do is add a good couple more items here to the option one. So I'm going to come into the tables here. We're going to add into option one and into option one. Um, let's say three. Um, the fold four, the fold five, the fold six. So let's say that um, this is really super hot and it's the one that we want everybody to use. So I'm going to refresh now. And you can see now that I have this taller table compared to the other. So that one has three features, that one has the four, and this one has a whole lot. Now, what I'd like to do is align them along their middles and not along the top so that that middle one um, looks just a little bit bigger. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the pricing table and you'll see here that I've selected the very first container, the container that, that then holds the loop and the pricing table. Um, in fact, what we can do here is just change the name of that to loop and then this to container. And I'm going to go from the horizontal row setting here um, in the previous one, I used the stretch to, you know, stretch all the items. And now we'll simply select the um, center. So we're not going to stretch them all to the same height. We now apply the center. 
we save. And now you'll see um, maybe a more traditional layout that you may have seen before, where the feature that has the best options is slightly larger than the other. So that looks a little bit better. It also means that this whole issue that you're going to have here now with the gap because of the stretch is done away with. And you can see how we have the same element here, one pulled through like that. And then the second one here, we've actually stretched the height. And you can already see you're going to have to get stuck in with some CSS now to try and, uh, you know, get everything to kind of align together. Whereas doing it this way, um, the item that you want um, highlighted is immediately highlighted very nicely. So, yeah, that's how you can make that happen. So now we have a whole lot of options available from the basics um, where it's not integrated into dynamic content to dynamic content, including images, um, which looks good. The other thing that you'll notice here is that here the individual items all have a tick box and in a separate row. When we pull through the dynamic content, this is all pulled through as one item. So the um, the different the tick boxes next to each item aren't applied by default. Um, it's applied to one item because the way that it is styled then is one item. So if we look at the styling here, you'll see that um, each item in that listing. So let's just go down here so we can nice and close to each other. So if you look at this item, you'll see that it has these classes and styles applied. And um, if we look at what happens here, you will see that those are applied to the outer elements. But when it comes to the inner elements, the same styles aren't applied. You could, I guess, go over and then copy these styles and apply them and change the structure manually to kind of match that if you wanted to. And then you'd end up with the the rows again. But um, I still think it looks, you know, okay like that. In fact, even without that icon on the left, um, it would still look fine. Um, in a case like that, I guess um, what you might want to do there is on that pricing table, uh, where we have the um, features coming through is maybe what we want to do there is head over to that icon. Um, let's see if we can change the icon size. So if we made that 40 pixels and then we had another look, then yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, unless we go in manually and apply some um, classes to have that work. So I'd be quite happy with that. Right, well, that's how you can create uh, dynamic um, pricing tables with images. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Thank you for watching.